folks, hope you all are doing well. I am Karan Bandal from Econocyte, your weekly wrap on economic news from India and around the world. So let us get started. Bank credit grows in India. Demand for loans or credit has been sustaining. Bank loans are 17.2 percent higher year on year in November 2022. They were 18 percent higher in October of last year. Outstanding bank credit stood at 129.5 trillion rupees or roughly 1.57 trillion dollars as on November 18th of 2022. Loans to services witnessed 21.3 percent growth, loans to retail trade 22 percent growth, personal loans 20 percent up. Within this category, consumer durable loans rose 51.2 percent, meaning consumers are spending heavily on refrigerators, washing machines other household appliances, furniture, automobiles, etc. Credit card outstanding rose 25 percent and loans to industry rose 13.1 percent. Overall, healthy growth in credit demand in almost all the sectors indicate an increasing business activity. Specifically, I will highlight growth in consumer durable loans at 51.2 percent. This is telling me that products like consumer electronics, home appliances, furniture and automobiles are in high demand and we know there are many con consumer durable manufacturing firms globally that are looking to diversify their supply chains away from China and this strong domestic demand in India should provide a further incentive to them to move their manufacturing base to India. Credit card outstanding rising by 25 percent concerns me however. Indian consumer is not savvy yet when it comes to personal finance. Tools like personal credit cards are convenient, but if not used with due thought, consumers may find themselves bogged down and in a debt trap. Let us look at taxes, GST, goods and services tax. GST revenue continues to grow. GST collections grew 15 percent in December 2022 to 1.49 lakh crore rupees year on year. This is the 10th month in a row where GST collection is above 1.4 lakh crore rupees mark. And as we had projected in our previous weekly update, India remains on track to achieve about 17.8 lakh crore rupees or 215 billion dollars in GST collections for this fiscal year. During the month of December, GST collections from import of goods were 8 percent higher and that from the domestic transactions were 18 percent higher, indicating a sustained tick up in manufacturing and domestic consumption cycle. Another economic indicator is car sales. Domestic passenger vehicle sales rise to a record in 2022. Domestic passenger vehicle sales came in at 37.93 lakh units or 3.79 million units in calendar year 2022, which is the highest so far. The previous record was hit in calendar year 2018 with 3.3 million units sold. Compared to 2021, 2022 sales are 23 percent higher. Experts credit this recovery to an improved availability of semiconductors and there is also an element of pent up demand here. Indian consumer now seems to prefer SUVs as SUVs make up around 42.3 percent of the total passenger vehicle sales. Also, about 40 percent of the vehicles sold in the industry were in the bracket of 10 lakh rupees or above, which means consumer is gravitating towards higher end vehicles with a focus on safety. All the major automakers enjoyed the benefits of this rising tide. For the calendar year, Maruti Suzuki's sales were up 16 percent. Hyundai Motors 9.4 percent, Toyota Kirloskar Motors 23 percent, Skoda Auto India 125 percent and Tata Motors 59 percent. Okay, let us look at PMIs now. India's factories end 2022 on a strong note. S&P Global manufacturing PMI rose to 57.8 in December 2022. It was 55.7 in the month before. December's reading was the highest since October 2020 and is in the expansion zone for the 18th month in a row. PMI above 50 indicates an expansion. Experts point out that a strong PMI reading is due to domestic demand strength 
leading to purchase of additional materials and hiring of additional workers. PMI came out strong despite exports rising at the slowest pace in 5 months. All this data cements the view that Asia's third largest economy, that is India, is better placed than many other emerging economies to weather the impact of a potential global recession. Let's go to other major Asian economies. Asia factories remain under pressure as global demand slows. Asia's manufacturers remained under pressure in December 2022. Several PMIs were in contraction territory across the region, meaning their PMIs were below 50. The S&P Global PMI reading for Vietnam came in at 46.4 in December. Malaysia's December PMI fell to 47.8. Taiwan's manufacturing PMI rose in December but still came in at 44.6. Philippines was the only standout with December PMI at 53.1 in the expansion zone. Manufacturing activity in these countries relies heavily on demand in key markets such as China, Europe and the US. And weakness in all these markets is driving down the manufacturing activity in this region of Asia. Same is the case with world's second largest economy. China PMI continues to fall. The official PMI in China fell to 47 in December 2022 from 48 in November 2022. Factory activity shrank for the third month in a row. After abrupt removal of zero COVID strategy, infections in China are surging leading to temporary labor shortages and increased supply chain disruptions, clearly affecting manufacturing output. Weakening external demand from the US and EU, rising interest rates in the West, inflation and ongoing Russia-Ukraine war is likely to further slow China's exports. So there is little hope for a rebound in China's PMI in the near future. I'm listing economic indicators from different parts of the world to highlight why there is a broader consensus that 2023 is going to be tough for the global economy. Except for India, for all other major Asian countries, manufacturing makes up a large portion of their economies. Based on manufacturing PMI readings in these countries, everyone is in contraction zone. India remains an exception where Bank credit continues to grow, passenger vehicle sales hit a record, PMI remains in expansion zone and indirect tax collections continue to grow as well. All pointing to resilience of India's economy. I hope you found this week's wrap interesting. I will speak with you again next week. Until then, take care.